Capcom presents Marvel vs. Capcom has been one of the most well-known and beloved fighting game series with its crazy gameplay and its wide cast of characters. However, the future of Marvel vs. Capcom seems to be up in the air at the moment due to the poor sales and mixed critical reception of MVC Infinite, the latest game in the series. Back in the 90s and early 2000s, Marvel wasn't really huge besides stuff like X-Men and Spider-Man, which I believe made the communications between both companies to be a bit smooth. But since Marvel is now part of the House of Mouse, I think Capcom had yes freedom to add the characters they would have wanted, making one of the main reasons why MVCI was heavily criticised, and unfortunately is making me worry about the potential future of the MVC series. Now it isn't to say the future of MVC is going to be bad, as there have been re-releases of the old games with the one up arcade cabinets and there seems to be a big movement during the making of this video, with Maximilian Dude pissing the free MVC2 hashtag that seems to be getting attention from companies like Disney and Digital Chips, the developers responsible for the many retro Tietzens. But what if we got a new vs Capcom game, but replace Marvel with someone else? Someone like the home to an iconic Bew Hedgehog. I'm a big Sega fan and I think they're on the same level as Capcom when it comes to the amount of beloved series and characters which I think could work in a versus game without feeling out of place. Both Sega and Capcom have worked on similar styles of games. They've both made messed up platformers, fighting games, games that feature zombies and both companies started out in the arcade scene. Capcom was also one of the leading third party supporters for both the Saturn and Dreamcast. The audiences are very similar, with even some being fans of both, which is why I could see the potential of a Seder vs Capcom game. I'm not the only one who thinks this could work, as some pals of mine would love to see this too. And there's also a fan who is working on a fan made crossover fighter, link to the fan project down in the description below. I'm not going to dwell much on the core gameplay department, as I think the core gameplay has been consistent throughout the first series. 2v2 or 3v3 is fine with me, No, I would yin towards the latter. What I would like to see added is a lot for custom assist, similar to Soul Girls where you can see any of that character's moves to be the assist attack. Now this is what the majority of people would want to know. The characters are what get people excited into playing any fighting game and what is usually one of the first questions people ask whenever a new game comes out. Yields of people get hyped seeing their beloved characters fighting and interacting with each other and it's probably the reason someone picks up the game. Now how big should the roster be? It won't be crazy as Smash Ultimate's 80 plus characters, especially since the roster has been building up over 20 years. Same goes to Marvel vs Capcom 2's 56 fighters, since the majority of them are reused sprites from the previous titles. Since the Seder fighters would be brand new, I decided that 44 fighters would be fair. Just 4 characters sigh away from Ultimate MVC 3's 48 fighters, 22 Capcom fighters and 22 Seder fighters with some DLC afterwards so it could be bitter by the final update. Some of the Capcom fighters would be from the previous game, at least from Ultimate MVC 3 and Katsunuko vs Capcom, since it would save time on development plus some of them are fan favourites in the series and would be difficult to remove them without receiving backlash. So with that, let's reveal the returning touters. So of course we're starting with Ryu. He's the poster boy for all Capcom crossovers and the same goes with Chun Yi, being the Yiden woman. 
We also need a Yard's Grapia character, and Mike Hadar fits that criteria. Morgan from Dark Soldiers is an obvious pick too. She is basically the equivalent to Captain Falcon in the Smash franchise, being in every Capcom crossover, but hasn't had a new game in decades. <sighs> Dante and Virgil are obvious pits. Now instead of their DMC3 design, they would be based on the recent installment DMC5 and Dante would also have moves that represent DMC5, like the chainsaw bike, instead of moves entirely from DMC3. Along with Virgil, I will be adding another famous villain, which is Albert Wester, and he was a competitive favourite back in MVC3. The Meta Drive versions of Strider and Ghouls and Ghosts were programmed by Seda, so I think it makes sense to add both Strider and Arthur. Rival Schools is a favourite amongst old fighting game fans, and its sequel, Project Justice, was a Dreamcast exclusive, so I decided to include a character from those games. I decided with Batsu, since he appeared in Captain America vs. Capcom, making those fans happy too. Beautiful Joe and Amaterasu were two of my favourites in Ultimate, so I wanted to go and cue them, and they have a unique build in them compared to the more humanoid characters. Plus, I can see the great interactions between Joe, Dante, and another character on the Seder side. Phoenix Wright was always a fun and goofy character in Ultimate, plus Ace Attorney is a very popular Capcom series, so I think it would be nice to see him back. And funny, I chose three Mega Man characters in the base roster, each representing one of the sub-series of games. However, I only picked two Return of Mega Man fighters, with the third one being brand new. Eh, uh, sort of. First is Tron Bon from the Mega Man Legends games, who was a popular fighter in MVC 2 and 3, thanks to her great assist tools, and I can see some great interactions between her and plenty of fighters on all sides. I've also included the original Mega Man, but I will focus on his moves from the classic games, as well as the moves from Mega Man 11, rather than the moves he had from the first two MVC games. He did use his speed gear as a super move, slowing down the opponent, so he can deal unique combos, as well as use the black hole bomb power from Mega Man 9. He just seemed to be the obvious choice to put in a crossover fighter with Sonic in it. The final Mega Man character was probably the hardest decision I had to make in this made up roster. Zero is amongst one of the most popular characters in Capcom's library, as well as one of the favourites in the first series. But then I was thinking of changing it up a bit by replacing him with the Mega Man Zero version. I just couldn't decide. So in the end, I went on Twitter and asked which version of Zero people would like to see in a new versus game. The votes were heavily divided, but in the end, the Mega Man Zero version came out on top. It was only 18 votes, but I'm a very small channel. I could have put in both, but I only wanted one version of a character. Plus, both Zeros have different builds, so seeing them as one character with one of them being an alternative costume, wouldn't work without feeing off. Mega Man Zero has similar moves to his X counterpart, like the Rise of Fire Uppercut, Downward Stab, as well as the Try and True Beam Saber combo, and his mobility is similar too, so I think older Zero players would be happy with this version. He would have also have other weapons, such as the Buster Sot, the Sealed Boomerang, and the triple rod, making him some sort of weapons master. I was told that he can also summon cyber elves that have different abilities, and in SNK vs Capcom Chaos, where he was playable, he has a few in his move kit. I'd be happy with both zeros, but I would like to see this incarnation of the character. Now that we have about 15 returning fighters, as well as the new zero, Let's see who I added for the rest on the Capcom side. Resident Evil is Capcom's most profitable franchise, selling over a total of 117 million units. 
We've had Jill Valentine in MVC2 and 3, as well as Chris Redfield in 3 and Infinite. So for this one, I wanted to add someone else. And out of all the RV characters that haven't been in a Versus game, I'm surprised that year on Kennedy has never been playable. He's been in three of the most critical game titles in the series, Resident Evil 2, as well as its remake, and Resident Evil 4. And for this game, I chose the RE4 Yuck, which is the fan favourite. I couldn't find the original source, but he was apparently pure to be playable in Katsunoko. Like Chris and Deal, Yeon will be proficient with many firearms, as well as knives for close combat. I always yucked up the most wanted characters to be playable in the first game, and Yeon was usually mentioned. Nero is the current protagonist of the Devil May Cry series, and is probably going to be the main protagonist for future games. Devil May Cry 5 is also one of Capcom's most successful and critical game games in recent years, as well as one of my favourites. Nero would be equipped with the Blue Rose and his sword the Red Queen, which he could use to charge up both attacks. Holding the attack buttons would also make his specials move slightly different. He could use his Devil Breaker to pull enemies towards him, similar to Spencer, which could yield into interesting combos. He could use a selection of Devil Breakers, each with their own unique moves and properties, which can be switched on the fly, using a special command. However, they would only have a few uses before it breaks, and is switched to a new one. Overture can create a powerful electric sock that can cause wall bounces, the punch iron can be used to yacht on an enemy and cause multiple hits, and the helter stelter can drill through enemies. The Devil Breakers have a lot of great potential, and that is the main reason why I think Nero would be so cool to appear in a team fighting game. Power Stone 1 and 2 were arena party fighters made on the Sega Naomi arcade boards and were ported to the Dreamcast. These games were fondly remembered by Sega fans just as well as Capcom fans, so I think having a Power Stone fighter just makes perfect sense. Edward Falcon is the main character in the series, which was the reason I chose him. He has a lot of punches and kits for his normals, but since Power Stone has items you can pick up while in the middle of battle, I think he could use them as part of his moveset. There are a variety of guns, bombs, swords, two-handed weapons, and plenty of wacky ones like the trumpet. The characters can transform into more powerful forms, and in Falcon's case, he dons a metal suit that can fire missiles, perform a fiery Soryuken, and do a Nova Dash, which could be part as a set of his regular supers, or be a transformation super similar to his origin games. If we're taught in physically, then Asura is likely the most powerful character in this roster. Asura's Wrath is a sonin anime in video game form, with its over the top fight scenes, camera shots, the many transformations, and playing as a yet or god who just won't die, which makes Asura a perfect fit for an over the top fighting game. He even fought Ryu in the Asura's Wrath DLC, and I think it have some good interactions with Amaterasu, which was one of the reasons I wanted her in the roster too. He could start out in his first form only with two arms, but he could gain more arms by either being dedicated as a permanent transformation super over the course of the mats, or when he uses health, which can unlock more moves in his arsenal. His level 3 could be his 6th arm mantra form and fire a barrage of punches, but in a cinematic anime way. I actually didn't know much about the series until one of my pals on Discord mentioned it when I was discussing this video idea and after he mentioned this character, I looked up more information on this game and yeah, I could see a Sendoku Basara character being a playable character in this game. I don't believe the series was popular here, but it was quite big in Japan for a time, with four mainline series, plenty of spin-offs, as well as a couple of anime series and stage dramas. There are two characters who are the face of the series, which are Date Masamune and Sanada Yukimura. Like Yeon earlier, Date Masamune was apparently considered to be a playable character in Tatsunoko, but in the end I went with Sanada Yukimura since that was the character I was recommended to, and also because we don't have a dual wielding spear wielder 
which I did see him as a decent mid-range fighter. The dames are similar to the Miso dames, having the over the top attacks, plus there was a 2D fighting game developed by Art System Works on the PS2 titled Sendoku Basel Cross, so we know that a character from those games can work here too. And for the last Capcom fighter, I chose one from the Breath of Fire games. I was thinking of adding the main protagonist Ryu, but I thought Nina would be more interesting using her magic spells and flight ability. There are multiple incarnations of Ryu and Nina in these games, but in the end, I went for the Breath of Fire 3 version of Nina, since I think Breath of Fire 3 is the most popular one in the franchise, and the version who focuses on offensive spells. No, the Breath of Fire 2 and 4 Ninas could also work too. I imagine her to be similar to Storm, a Zona with ice, lightning and wind spells who is able to fly across the arena, but unlike Storm, she also uses fire magic. I could see her call out Ryu to do a variety of sword attacks and call upon his various dragon forms as a set of super moves. Since the Seder side is down to have RPG characters too, I think it would make some interesting conversations between her and the other RPG cast. That's all of the Capcom sides, which consists a lot of return cast, but I think I added some unique and highly requested characters, but now it's all brand new here as we embark on the Seder side of the roster. Let's start with the Sonic cast, with Mr. Needle Mouse himself. We can't have a Sega crossover fighting game without Sonic, especially since Mega Man is already added. He will be the most mobile fighter in this game, able to use his homing attack to get to opponents on the other side, as well as to net an edge at all. He would have a lot of fast punches, kicks, and spin moves, but I think it would be cool to add some of his Wisp moves in his kit, such as the Azer and Rocket Wisp as part of his super moves. I can also see Sonic uses elemental shields as part of his moveset too, like the flame shield that makes Sonic dash across the screen, as well as the bubble shield, which can be used as a meteor attack. Of course his other free move would be Super Sonic, but for this game, it would be a cinematic sequence. In the base roster, I only decided to have a maximum of 3 fighters per franchise, and the same goes to the Sonic series, especially since I want them to explore more franchises besides their Yid Honto. Sonic was already obvious, so I only added 2 more characters to choose in the base roster, which was a difficult as there is a lot of fan favourites, so in the end I did a voting poll on Twitter asking people who they would like to see in a first game out of Tails, Knuckles, Shadow, and Amy. The one who came out on top with the most votes was Knuckles, and yeah, that made sense considered his bruiser fighting style. Unlike Sonic, Knuckles would rely more on his punches instead of kicks, but will have moves like his spin attacks similar to his rival. He could also have the ability to gid similar to Rocket Raccoon in Ultimate MVC3, and can perform a guide attack. His level 3 super to bring back Super Knuckles that would make old school Sonic fans incredibly happy. In the second poll we have Tails, who I can imagine fighting in two ways. He could either fight in his mech, like he did in Sonic Adventure 2, being similar to Tronbon, or as a mutual friend on my Twitter described, as putting events in that he uses to fight, like summoning the Tornado, as a super, both plane and mech form. It could be similar to how he plays in Sonic Battle, throwing out Tutus from Tutu Rocket, laser guns, amongst other gadgets. I could see some elements of Sonic the Fighters 2 or 3 characters. His other 3 super to be Super Tails from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, as he could summon invincible Fikis to attack the opponent. If a Sega vs Capcom game does happen, then I could possibly see more Sonic characters playable as DLC, but for the time being, Let's talk about the rest of the Seder cast. Like Sonic the Hedgehog, it would be weird having a Seder vs Capcom game without seeing a playable character from the Virtual Fighter games. However, unlike Street Fighter, I would only be choosing one character, which is the poster boy of the series, Akira. Unlike the first games, Virtual Fighter is a 3D fighter, however he already did appear in another 2D fighting game which was Denki Bunko fighting Climax, and his move seems to work in a 2D space. I could see his interactions with Ryu about their training resume and honouring each other before a match. 
While I'm only including one Virtual Fighter character, I will also be including another character from one of Seda's other fighting names, which is Honey from Fighting Vipers. I was also thinking of Barn, who was also in Project Cross Zone, but it would be nice adding a female fighter, and Honey is one of the most well-known ones in Seda's fighting game library, especially her Ampho form from Sonic the Fighters and the Comets. No, for this game she would be in a human form. I could imagine the conversation the Sonic cast would have with her talking about how similar she is to one of their pals. Her moves would be incorporated into this game and could have her armor come off when taking enough damage, which could just be cosmetic. The Yakuza franchise has become one of Sada's biggest franchises in the last decade, so it would make sense at least having one character represented. But instead, I will be picking two fighters from the series. The first protagonist, Kazuma Kiryu, and the one from the newest game, Ichiban Kasuda. Kiryu could be the stance fighter in this game, adopting his multiple fighting styles with different commands. Stance fighters are characters like Gen from Street Fighter or Zun Hun from KOF. He could switch between Royer, the standard one inspired by Kazuo Street Fighting, Rust, which relies on speed and dodging in incoming attacks, and Beast, that relies on brute strength, able to carry heavy objects to smack opponents while withstanding weak attacks, but he will be incredibly slow in the stance. His super moves could all be based on the heat actions seen in Yakuza. Ichiban would have a mix of street fighting, wielding a mechanic baseball bat, as well as being another grappler of the game, with various wrestling moves and drop kicks. His super moves did also consist of calling out his party members. While people see it more as an Atlas title, Atlas is currently owned by Seda, and the Persona games are probably one of the most profitable franchises for both companies, especially when it comes to merchandise. Persona 5 is currently the recent and best selling game in the series, along with the Phantom Thieves collaborating in plenty of crossovers, so it would make sense that Joker would be included in this crossover too. He will wield his gun and knife, but the majority of his moves would be revolving around the many personas he uses, like Arsene and Jack Frost. His other three super could be the all out attack finister used in those games. Bayonetta, Beautiful Joe, and Dante in the same game? Devil May Cry and Bayonetta fans really want these two in the same console game, yet this happened, Seda and Capcom. Not including Joe and the Devil May Cry cast, C could have unique dialogue with a bunch of characters, like mistaking Nina for an angel, as well as insulting Amaterasu and Asura's godhood. Bayonetta would be pretty much how she would play in her origin titles, and maybe incorporate some of her weapons, like the swords and gun scythe from Bayonetta 2. All of her super attacks could be the variety of demons she summons in her games. One of the reasons I included Hada on the Capcom side, besides being the obvious Rapture character, was so I didn't see both Final Fight and Streets of Aids in the same game. Streets of Aids and Final Fight both represent the beat em up genre from each company. Now, in my opinion, Streets of Aids is better. I only decided on one character from the series, and that character in particular is the Eden woman who has appeared in every title, which is Blaze Fielding, particularly her Streets of Aids 4 design. Besides adding another female fighter into this roster, I think she would stand out the most from Streets of Rage's lineup, especially with her combination of judo and gymnastics, being able to grab and throw enemies on the ground as well as in the air. She is able to use the weapons from Streets of Rage, such as a pipe, broken bottles, smoke bombs, and knives, and one of her supers could be toying the top with the rocket launcher from the first game. I remember when Transformed was coming out, people were excited to see Vice be a playable racer, and I think adding him in a fighting game will get the same excitement. Out of any character, I could see him being a jet of all trades, with some decent projectiles, as well as being pretty dead up close with his dual wielding cutlasses. His super moves to consist of the special moves he has in size of Arcadia, such as Cutlass Fury, Vein of Swords, and even a counter special move with Skull Sealed, where he would summon a pirate spectre that would cause damage. His other free move could either be calling out the Bureau Sip or his most powerful move in the game, Pirate's Wrath. 
However, Vice won't just be the only styles of Arcadia representative in this game, due to the story for this fighting game, but also because I think having a boomerang wielder would be unique. I create and use a boomerang to cover a lot of space in a fight, as well as bring opponents towards her for potential mix-ups and combos. Seaton also use a variety of magic, including water, air, ice, fire and electric, but the majority of attacks would be fire-based, that increment that can boost either her teammates or her own attack power for a limited time, possibly being one of the only characters that can give a boost to teammates. Her super moves would be based on her special moves in styles of Arcadia, Yak Yanderburst, which causes a big earthquake on the ground, and Alpha Storm, that causes a fiery tornado. Her other free move to be a meta cyclone, her strongest attack. I wanted to add a few retro fighters too, and one of Seda's older series is Fantasy Star, a popular JRPG series that started out on the Master System. Alice is a sword and sealed fighter, so I think she could have similar moves to Captain America, such as a charge and star, and stars and stripes. She knows some basic fire magic that could be used as a projectile, a teleport spell, and is able to stun enemies with the spell Bindware. She could possibly also heal herself for her super similar to role in Katsunoto, or offer healing to other partners during the assist. Fantasy Star was a popular Sega series amongst retro fans, and is popular with Japanese players too, so I think having Ace in this game will make those fans excited. From one star to another, I decided to choose Vistar to add an unorthodox fighter. I could see Vistar similar to fighters like Dozum and Super Stroll, using his stretchy arms to attack his opponents from a distance, and Spencer, who could pull away or pull himself to his opponents to extend air combos. He could use a Meteor Strike move similar to Super Stroll's Meteor Smash, and for one of his supers, he could bounce across the entire screen, making him invincible. Ryster wasn't a huge player, but he has a small cult following thanks to the many re-releases. He wasn't transformed as the person who starts the races, but he hasn't been playable, so this would be a great chance for him to enter the spotlight again. Alex Kidd is what Mr. Gamer Watts is to Smash Bros. Being that one character from an old series, now with Miracle World DX being released recently, He's gotten some attention. A lot of his moves consist of punches, but in Alex Kidd in Sonobi World, he wields a katana, can throw two knives, and can turn himself into a tornado. He could also use a motorbike too, which should either be a super catch or a move similar to Dose Rider's attack from MVC3. He can use his helicopter as a super move, which could be similar to one of Mega Man's supers in MVC2. For his level 3, he could play a game of rock, paper and scissors, where the opponent automatically uses, which then drops a massive anvil on their head. Depending on the hand dealt, an after effect could happen, the Alex Kidd could gain some health back, or the opponent will be temporarily poisoned. Another retro series I wanted to have a representative is from Dolgonats. However, instead of putting the heroes, I decided to have the main antagonist himself. Death Adder, since for one, it would be nice to include a villain on the Seder side, and two, he's the most recurring character in the series, even having his name in one of the titles. He would probably be the slowest character in the entire game, with yon windups, but a lot of his attacks would deal a lot of damage, with some having a bit of invincibility frames. His super moves could consist of this powerful grapple special that he does in Dolden Axe the Duel, that causes a yard's thunder strike on the enemy, and his level 3 to summon a dragon, seen in the first game that scorches his enemies. Adding another villain on the Sadie side, we have Savario Blair from the strategy RPG series Valkyria Chronicles. She's not the main villain, but is probably the most well known in the series. She wields a special yance and sealed, which did make her a decent mid range fighter, but her yance and sealed can also fire out powerful blue things, making her pretty strong. Besides her Yance and Sealed, she also uses a rifle, which can be her zonin tool. She also has an after image ability, which can be used to teleport away or behind her enemies, which tend to have some good mix up potential. Like Akira, she's also playable in Denki Bonko Fighting Climax, in which she can be used as a blueprint of how she would play. Secure Wars is a popular series in Japan, at least during the 90s and 2000s 
with multiple games, spin-offs, anime series, movies, light novels, and even stage plays, so it makes sense to add a character from this series. I was thinking about the newest character from the recent Sakura Wars game, but I heard the reception from the Japanese fans weren't too happy, so I decided to add the main love interest in the first few games and anime, Sakura Sinduji. In this series, the combat is entirely in mechs, but from this made up crossover, she will be fighting on foot, just like the Project Crosszone titles. No, she will probably use her mech for the majority of her supers, maybe even as a transformation super. Her fighting style would be similar to the majority of samurai fighters in any fighting game. From Japanese swordswoman to ninja, it's time to choose a character from the Shinobi franchise, one of Seda's oldest series. The original Shinobi who is probably the most iconic, Joe Musashi would be a decent pick, but instead I would be going for the main character from the PlayStation 2 game Hatsuma, mostly because he gets cooler with the long red scarf and black outfit but also has a lot more cinematic chassis moves you can work with, like you can incorporate his special attack where he kills multiple enemies with one blow into his other free super move. Unlike Strider with his robotic animals, Hatsuma would have some magic spells as well as two knives that would make him different. I think he would have a lot of unique conversations with characters like Strider and the Devil May Cry crew. What I love about these crossover fighting games is that you can make a character who isn't normally designed for fighting and turn them into a weird but fun fighting name character that still references their origin through gameplay like Phoenix Wright or the Dark Hunt Dodd. While Ulla does wield twin laser pistols, most of the time she just dances against her foes throughout Space Channel 5, but I think her dancing skills could be turned into a fighting style similar to how Gut Team plays in the KOF games. In the Project Cross Zone series, she even summons a bunch of old school Sadie characters like the Space Harrier Dude, Opa Opa, and the Wolfman from Ultra Beast, in which I think she could use in this game too. In fact, expand on the idea and reference more Sadie characters that I couldn't add onto the roster and probably use them as super moves like Echo the Dolphin, Gunstar Heroes, and BD Doe from Crazy Taxi. If there was a story mode or a story in the arcade mode, she could be reporting all her matches and the current events. Like Space Channel 5, there isn't much fighting from the player in Jet Set Radio, but I think Beak could work as an actual fighter. I could see Steak from Streets of Rage 2 as a blueprint for Beat's movesets. I could also see him as a Vector fighter. If you don't know what a Vector fighter is, they are basically fighters who have multiple hit special moves that have additional inputs after the attacks. Think of characters that like Fei Yon from Street Fighter and Iron Fist in MVC3. Beat would possibly have an amazing mix-up, being difficult to predict thanks to his retro attacks and high mobility. One of his special moves could be something similar to Sun Sun's special in MVC2 where he stakes up the walls and the ceiling and depending on the button would make him do different attacks, like a dive attack or spray some paint. I could see his air attacks being based on the tricks he do in the game. One of his super moves to be getting attention from the cops and the army as they try to hit him with tear gas, tanks, and even a helicopter with the opponent getting hit by the crossfire. And finally the last character in the base roster. I don't know much about Puyo Puyo besides being a popular young run and puzzle series and honestly I wasn't originally going to put a Puyo Puyo vet in this roster. But after getting some convincing by a few people, I decided to add the main character of the series, Al. Now, I wasn't sure how a character from a puzzle game would work in a fighting game, but as I mentioned earlier, you can turn a character that wasn't made for a fighting game into a fighting game character. But I also found out that Puyo Puyo started out as a spin-off from a dungeon crawler RPG series titled Mado Monogatari, where she is able to use various magic spells like fire, ice storm, and thunder, in which to be part of a move kick. I imagine her as a zoner, but with some setup abilities with the Puyo Blobs. Think characters like the Verza in Smash or Jacko from Guilty Gear. R would be able to summon the Puyos from the ground or by summoning them from the sky, in which she is able to throw, kick, or detonate them with one of her spells. Like Puyo Puyo, if you get four Puyos in a work though, they would blow up and it could work in a fighting name too, as once they blow up, it would cause some explosion damage onto the opponent. 
Her super is to consist of a strongest spell, Bailwin, and dumping a pile of garbage players onto the player. That's all for the charities in the base roster, but I will be mentioning some of the DLC fighters at the end of the video. In the meantime though, let's mention the game modes. So we have the usual suspects, Arcade, Training, Yoko Matches, and Online Versus mode, that hopefully would have a good connection. Training mode is the place to practice your combos and team synergy, but I would also suggest a tutorial mode to ease newbies in, similar to how Stoljo's handles it, guiding you to the fundamentals of a fighting game. There would also be your gallery mode, where you can yet at the profiles for each character, as well as yet at artwork and listen to music. I would like to see a SOP, hosted by Omotel from Sonic Adventure 2 and The Merchant from Resident Evil 4, or by Opa Opa from Fantasy Zone and Sylphie from Forgotten Worlds, in which he can purchase new colours, costumes, artwork and music. This can also be the place where you can buy DLC content too. The arcade mode is what it says on the tin, fighting a good number of rounds, usually either 8 or 10, with a final boss at the end. So, who is the final boss? Well, these will be the final bosses in the story mode too. The final bosses would be Dr. Eggman and Dr. Wily, who were the main villains in the Sonic and Mega Man crossover comics. The whole world's Gaiden idea is here, but from what little I know of the comics, the story would be different. In fact, the characters from each world would not know each other at first. The story would be centered around the Chaos Emeralds, the Master Emerald, and the Power Stones from the Power Stone universe, being the magical MacGuffins Eggman and Y used to contact each other and rule all the Seder and Capcom worlds. The Seder and Capcom worlds merge together is similar to what happens in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Albert Wester would also be working for Y and Eggman, but may or may not betray them by the endgame. The final boss fight would be against Y and Eggman's combined giant robot, the Jeff Ed Wai robot, which is powered by the MacGuffins. The music playing could be a combination of the Jeff Ed robot theme from Sonic 2 and Wai Stage 1 from Mega Man 2, Remix Together. Now, the reason why I included two styles of Arcadia characters is because the Delphinus, the sit from the game, would be used to fly across the many occasions in the story, and the vessel that possibly goes to Wai's and Edman's space fortress, so having at least both Vice and Arca Part of the plot would make sense to me. With the order of the universes going in chaos, I can imagine both the heaven and demon worlds going in sandboards, so dodgy and supernatural characters that like Ami, Asura, Bayonetta, and the Devil May Cry crew could possibly try to restore the balance. Death Adder could possibly be ruining the demon vids too, being a major conflict in the story. If Eggman and Y aren't the main antagonists in the story, I could possibly see Wise Men from Knights or Yami from Akami as the final bosses. Now the idea of merging worlds would be the central theme of the stages. Each stage will be a location from one of Seder's and Capcom's IPs, but will have elements of both companies. There will be some stages that already have a fighter representative, but I wanted to include a few stages from the series that aren't represented yet. In the base game, I've included 7 Capcom and 7 Seder stages, as well as the final stage, making a total of 15 stages. Both Seder and Capcom will each have a training stage based on Street Fighter and Virtual Fighter. Now, yes, start off with the Capcom side. Demon Vids will be inspired by the first level from the second game, Ghouls and Ghosts, with the Gravestones and Guillotines. You will see some of the enemies from the games, you have Firebrand, the Dream Reapers, and Zombies, but during the match you see enemies from Golden Axe, you have the Skeletons and the Chicken Yet Monsters, as well as the Angels from the Bayonetta games, battling against the Demons. From one horror location to another, we enter the interior of Morden's home castle. It will be somewhat similar to the stage from Captain Noko, with the mirrors in the background. It starts out pretty quiet with only the ma marionettes from the first Ever May Cry title, popping out from the ceiling, but then the mirror will sign and unleash various creatures from House of the Dead, Raid in a Castle, the story and ornaments, amongst other stuff. Up next is the Yondo stage from Power Stone, which is Edward Fountain's home stage in his origin game. You will see the rest of the cast from Power Stones cheering the players on, 
but during the match they would be ambushed by the Gaia forces from Valkyria Chronicles as they destroyed the city. That is, until around the end of the match, you see Squad 1 from the first Valkyria Chronicles team up with the Power Stone heroes to take down the Gaia forces. By the time the match has ended, the heroes will celebrate defeating the opposing army. Next is the flying ship from the Mega Man Yezin stains. It would be similar to the stage in Captain Oko vs Capcom. In the background you see the Delphinus flying in the background alongside the Flucker from Mega Man Yezins trying to take down the ship that the players are on as well as taking down the opposing airships from Stars of Arcadia. I wanted it to include some representation from Monster Hunter since it's Capcom's setting yards as series, but I didn't want to include an avatar character with no name in the roster, so I instead went for a location from the franchise. I decided to go for the location that is based on the latest name in the main series, Monster Hunter Rise. The maps would start out peaceful, but then you see Raphios terrorising the villains, that is until we see the Panzer Dragoon alongside B. Hatzer, the Chickens and the Pyrocos team up to take the beast down. And finally, for the Capcom side, we have Gedu High School from Viral Schools. The stage is just set outside of the school, with the main cast from Sekiro Wars performing a play, while various characters from Viral Schools are either watching them, spectating the maps in front of them, or just goofing off. Now it's time for the Seda stages. Since the Master Emerald is part of the plot, I thought it'd be fitting to have Angel Island be part of this crossover game. You would probably see various animal critters jumping around, as well as some of the Sonic cast who couldn't make the roster. You could possibly see some monsters from Monster Hunter roaming around too, or the iron to be attacked by various mavericks. They could also start causing fire to the iron, similar to the events of Sonic 3. We currently don't have a city stage, and what would be better than the nightlife of Kamurocho from the Yakuza franchise? You could see various cast from those games, as well as Final Fight and Streets of Aids, possibly causing a riot, and then during the match the heroes from those games to break them up. I've chosen a beat level based on the Outrun games. We just see cars that don't buy in the background, such as the original Outrun car, the Hornet from Daytona USA, and various drivers from Crazy Taxi. We just see various characters in swimwear from various series like Street Fighter, Virtual Fighter, Sonic, and many more, seeing, swimming, or playing on the beats. I wanted it to include some representation of Monty Ball in this crossover, however I didn't know how to include II in this game, so I think at least having a stage would suffice. Based on the first world in the series, this location features a just jungle environment with waterfalls and various moving platforms in the background. You would possibly see the various cast of Monty Ball, as well as Zack and Witty, who did them some top kit in exchange for bananas. This area is based on the locations from Space Channel 5, set in a live concert with Uyla's rival Puddin performing alongside Amido from Samba de Amido and Fiesa from Dark Slaughters. I wanted to, to include characters from both companies' space themed games like Ben and Rangers, Star the Adiator, and Cyberbots, so I think adding them in the audience, cheering the performers would be cool. You should see various aliens from Space Channel 5, as well as the Mets from Cyberbots flying in space. Based on the first level of Nights into Dreams, Spring Valley. At the start of the Mets, you would spot the Nightopians, as well as Knights, who are singing and dancing, but during the Mets, you see a rift that shows the Seattle Valley found in the opening moments of Akami, as well as the constellations of the different gods. I don't think they would add this, but it would be so cool to see a Christmas variation of Nestades when the holiday season shows up, just like Christmas nights, where we see the background characters in festive outfits. And for the final stage in arcade mode, we have a combination of the Death Ed and Dr. Wai's Fortress merged into one. This could be unlocked once you beat story or arcade mode. You would see various aesthetics from both the Sonic and Mega Man franchise, and maybe see some enemies in the audience, like Metal Sonic, Bass, the Bandits, and the Old Devil. Welcome to the Fantasy Zone. Get ready! Nassau from the stages and for the base content in general, but if this crossover is a reality, then it's very likely we would at least get one season pass. Most season passes usually have around between four to six fighters, so I decided to have at least six characters 
free for each side. With the DLC characters, I wanted to include the ones who would bring a lot of hype after the release and ones that fans would be willing to pay money for. Marvel vs Capcom 2 is probably one of the most popular titles in the competitive scene, and while the majority of the cast are from different properties, there are two who are completely original from that game, and out of the two, I believe Ruby Heart is the most popular one. So imagine if Ruby Heart was announced as the first DLC fighter, it would make MVC2 fans very excited to see her appear after over two decades. I deliberately yet Rio be a DLC character like how he was treated for the PC version of Transformed. Sun Moon has a top following amongst old school Sega fans. There are character requests handled by similar digital Austin fans who would they like to see in Sonic Transformed as DLC. And while it wasn't a official vote, apparently Rio was popular enough to be included in the PC version as paid DLC. And I think he should sell well for a crossover fighter, especially if it ties with the Senmu anime. While he was voted third in my poll, I know Sado is one of the most popular characters, so I included him and stuff that Chaos Sphere and Control would make him stand out. I've also included a Mega Man character, however I didn't add anyone of the X generation until now, and this time it's a villain. Sigma was an infinite, however I decided to choose someone brand new to the fighting name scene, and that Maverick is vile. He would be a Zona character and play similar to how he is in Mega Man X, and for a super he should use the ride armor. For the final characters in the season pass, I decided to go for a mascot theme. For Capcom, I decided with Captain Commando. For Marvel vs Capcom fans, and for Seda, I decided to go for the great Seda Gaka Sanzero, who was the mascot for the Saturn. While he has a likeness of a Japanese actor, I think he would cool with it since he appeared in Project Cross Zone 2 and even had his own game on the Saturn in Japan. I could see him as a bizarre character, with the majority of his moves being from those commercials and his interactions with Sakura would be hilarious. If this game ever comes to light and does well along with the first season pass, I could potentially see more characters like B. Hatzer, Dimitri, and Majima, but at the moment, this is just some fans' wistiest. I do hope this becomes a reality, at least a concept. Let me know if you would like to see this happen too, and let me know what characters you would like to see.